Hi everyone, we are here at Embedded World again, 2023 uh, edition, and we have Brian next to me. Hi Brian, nice hey, to Dan, meet you. No, nice great to, to be we here. Can do this. Great to see you in person. <laughs> <laughs> long, long time we yeah. haven't seen, right? So, so many yeah. calls and so many meetings, right. but always on, online. So, Brian, we have just launched these days S32 G3. Can you briefly tell people again why why is such a good uh, product? Yeah. So you know, S32 is part of the uh, S32 G is part of the overall S32 automotive platform. We have a full range of devices across the vehicle, and why this one's exciting, the S32 G3. It really extends our S32 G2 family, which has been wildly successful in the market, both in automotive and not automotive. Uh, and we're extending that with the G3 series, which allows us to have 2.5x more performance, 2.5x more networking, and 2.5x more memory on the chip. So it's really a performance and memory upgrade to the, the G family. And the beauty of it is, and this is it by the way, it's the size of a thumbnail basically. Now we, ha we have the board in the back, but yeah. the part is covered by, by yeah. this uh, fan, but this, this, is, this is the part, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how well it's seen, but it's really cool. Yeah, and what's really excited about this part and why it's very popular in the industry is because, you know, it, you typically in automotive have microcontrollers here and you have maybe application processors here. They're doing infotainment yeah, and ADAS. Yeah, yeah. But this kind of hits a sweet spot because it brings the best of both worlds together, right? We have microcontrollers, we have Cortex M7s, we have application processors with Cortex A53s. But where we start to really even get more unique with this part that provides a lot of value to our customers is we have support for ASL D functional safety systems. And that's because we have not just lockstep, lockstep's not enough, it's part big part of it, but we have lockstep for the M7s, mm -hmm. as well as lockstep for the Cortex A53s, which I believe is unique in the industry, and to be able to cluster lockstep those, that makes it really popular with our automotive customers. Um, the key thing though, is that they're pin for pin and software compatible, um, that these devices, you know, we have existing customers, a lot of existing yeah. customers today that want to do upgrade in performance and such, now we give them that path pin out software compatibility, or we have new customers uh, that uh, they have a choice, right? We have some that start with the microcontroller only version, which is the S32G 234M, right? It's just the three dual core lockstep M7s. And they sometimes they could get away with using S32K in some cases, which yeah. is interesting. But if you look at the scalability of the roadmap, yeah. they say, but we're gonna add lots of features over time. And we want the ability to have some of that application processing. So it's, that's a really interesting example of why the scalability is really important with these parts. Starting with a microcontroller going up to a processor, by the way, that has 30 cores in it. There's 21 ARM cores of the 30, but yeah. there's 30 processor cores in it. There's a lot going on. A lot of uh, redundancies and a lot of uh, Yeah, I mean, that. there's a, all the systems have processing and flexibility. Um, so it's providing a lot of value to our customers because of that scalability. Uh, and it's going into some very key applications for this new, like we talk about software defined vehicles as yes. vehicle compute. I don't think people yeah. realize how much uh, network traffic it is within a car, right? I mean, we in the industry realize it, but, but uh, I think this is something kind of hitting people exactly. which are not familiar with the topic, that, right? So they, see, they, see they see electrification, they see battery, this is all talked about everywhere. But what's under the covers? <laughs> but what is under the cover? You have traffic in the zone, between the zones, between the domain controllers, you might move data to the cloud. So uh, S32G and this network gateway processor yeah. basically comes to, to help the car manage all this traffic within and with the cloud. And by the way, on that, I would mention one, the name we actually use, which I don't think we've mentioned yet, yeah. is Vehicle Network Processors. Yeah. And it's really because of that, because what really also differentiates it is the amount of networking that it supports. And not only on the interfaces, yeah. we support 20 CAN, CAN FD interfaces, right, yeah. but we also support three gigabit ethernet, with now this part can do three 2.5 gigabit. The G2 could only do one 2.5, so there's four gigabit interfaces. There's a part that was co-developed with this part, the SJ1110, which gives us a 10-port switch, and that board actually brings out 12 Ethernet ports on it, and 18 of the 20 CAN ports. So that's, I just want to branch out, we're talking about networking, that it's very optimized, not only to have the interfaces, but it has network accelerators for both the CAN, 16 of those 20 CAN are accelerated, and then three of those four gigabit Ethernets, and they're all 2.5 on that one, are accelerated with the packet forwarding engine for gateways and routing and virtual LANs and moving traffic from Ethernet to CAN, CAN to Ethernet. There's a lot going on, but yep. I'm glad you brought up the, the network yep. because it's, the, it's part of the name and it's, it's part it's of the differentiation, from, right? right? Yep. Yeah. What we wanted also to, to let you know is that we have a great processor, as, as, we, <laughs> as we described in detail, 
but we also have an enablement tools and software solution. So if you are a customer for S32G2 or G3 now, you are not left alone. NXP is doing a lot of work and it's putting a lot of effort to bring you an enabling ecosystem. For example, we have tools to fix some of the enablement problems. Um, we have S32 Design Studio, it's our debugger solution. We have a probe and we let you do multi-core debug. We let you uh, do cross-triggering between cores. You can stop one core and debug the other one and do all these kind of modern debug uh, techniques. We offer uh, what we call configuration tools. For example, if we look at, if we look at this processor, we have a, a packaging, we have a big number of pins, but yet smaller yeah, than the capabilities yeah. that we just described that the part has. So there is needed to do some routing. There is needed to, to map some pins on, based on applications. And that can be quite a difficult job without our pin tool, which basically lets one pick up the, the configuration that they want and, and supports. And then we have the clock tool in, 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 in order to be able to set up the clock tree. So that, that's another great tool, which has also functionalities like find the near value and, and lets you suggest you the values in case you struggle. We have real time drivers, we have MCAL drivers, and they are all coming with uh, supporting the configuration pins tool. So you can, uh, uh, peripheral tool, sorry, which lets one quickly configure DMAs, interfaces, CAN, and, and all the peripherals that needs to be done. So all these tools are available. You can find more information on uh, Design Studio community. We, we, we recommend you to, to go there as an entry point. And there is more. There's a lot more. <laughs> There's a lot more. <laughs> we have, for example, what we call boot tools in case you are struggling to initialize your part, to, to let the SRAM set with the correct uh, values for speed to, to make the most out of the part. There are what we call DCD, IVT, and Quad SPI tools that, that, that make your life easy to, to tell the boot ROM how to, how to boot and prepare your platform. And maybe one very important tool is the DDR tool. So this, this board has here the DDR, LPDDR4. It works DDR4 and LPDDR4. In, in this particular case, we have a LPDDR4 in, on, on this board. Now, configuring LPDDR4 may be a struggle but we offer a tool which guides you through the process, which generates the code in the end. The initialization code is compatible with the various formats. You can have bare metal applications or generated for Linux and, and, and other uh, OSs. So there is a lot of enablement that we put there and, and we really help you um, get started, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's very important. It's a complex part. It does a lot of things, but being able to configure it is is very important. Yeah. Maybe Green VIP we should mention. Well, that. yeah, uh, Gold VIP. So Sorry, Gold it's VIP it's for VIP. Uh, the S thirty two G three is available now, and Gold VIP is a great product. We're seeing a lot of uh, momentum around that. Lots of downloads every week. It's available for free on nxp.com. What is it? It is a end to end package that really integrates all the software we're talking about from the drivers, MCALs, the firmware up at the bottom. Um, it has a virtualization, it supports uh, multiple inst instances of Linux, mm -hmm. uh, it supports Autosar Adapt. Well, Adapt is coming, we'll have that soon, but we have uh, Autosar Classic. Uh, we have built in intrusion detection capabilities over their updates, security, gateway capabilities, and cloud, co cloud connectivity, cloud, yeah, cloud integration cloud yep. with AWS. So, out of the box, within 10 minutes, uh, we actually provide scripts so people can actually evaluate the silicon, first of all. Within yep. 10 minutes, they can actually run all these scripts. They can understand when we turn on and off accelerators, for example, what does that do to my CPU load? What does that do to my network traffic? And they can do trade-offs and they can see that right out of the box. Now on top of that, with that whole environment, and I forgot to mention one of the key ones which is being shown above us here is Kubernetes. We added yeah. support for uh, Kubernetes distribution so we can manage workloads, uh, containerization, uh, and we can do that remotely. This is actually remote access into this board. It's running Grafana, it's running Prometheus, event management, and visualization. It's doing quite a lot. It also supports the full complement of uh, AWS with uh, Greengrass and AWS IoT Fleetwise for really intelligent data collection. Uh, and uh, so with this stack that we're talking about with Gold VIP, it also does pre-integration of key partners as I, I refer to some of those, but that's really important for yep, our customers because they don't want to just buy a chip and a board and say, okay, let me go talk to partners no, no, no. and get integrated. And that could take six months, sometimes two years. So we've been working with some of these partners for two years to just optimize and, and work the yeah. software. So that's a big value is the pre-integration with the partners. So it's a combination of NXP, open source, and partner software 
all together so out of the box, customers can actually start developing applications yep. too. Yep. But we give them the source, they can configure it, we give them the tools as you talked about, so when they want to develop their own software yep. and configure the device for their own applications or port this to their own specific device, we provide all of that to be configurable so customers can move quickly with their designs. Yeah. And I just want to mention, I don't know if I mentioned, that board also is a reference design. So much like Gold VIP is a software reference design, that board is a hardware reference design and many of the OEMs will take that as a starting point. Um, we provide the schematics, the layout, uh, the build materials, and they can move very, very quickly. And that has 35 NXP components on it, so it's really been optimized and looked at across our company with our, our advanced yeah. analog people, uh, even down to the pinout. Like some of these devices, like the PMEC is designed to work collaboratively to support Azel D. So that hardware provides tremendous value. Now we've upped the game uh, with the software reference design with Gold VIP and then supported by all the great tools that you described. <laughs> it's a powerhouse combination. We build them. <laughs> with the ecosystem, I didn't mention no, about no. a whole page of icon logos that we have of all the ecosystem partners that do this. And if you look around the floor, if you've seen, oh, yeah, there's gold boxes so everywhere. Yeah, there's yeah. boards everywhere. Uh, everywhere I go, I see this process. There's I, becoming, if you take a walk it's kind of like the yeah. Beagle board, or yeah, not yeah. the Beagle board, uh, that, these types of things, the Raspberry Pi, and these types of boards that are everywhere. Gold helps also, this right? Is becoming, this is becoming the box, or this platform for automotive, right? You see all these, uh, these boxes like this everywhere. Yep. So yeah, it's it's been it's really popular and gaining a lot of momentum. So all right. Yeah. I don't know. Thank you, Brian. I think yeah, we did a we did a good uh, try intro, to do a right? Sixty view of it. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> no. We, we 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 try to tell that we have a great product and yeah. that there is a lot of support in software and enablement to have it getting uh, evaluated and get started and and, and build with it. Right. Exactly. And and it's gaining momentum and the ecosystem is really behind it and that benefits the customers tremendously. So. So you can move up. Five you have the a good part and you have the enablement there go on and, and pick it up and uh, and check it out right thank you Brian very much uh, thanks for, for, for the time this you is a great conversation oh, to kind of bring it all together yeah, we, we, we try to, to give the story <laughs> to international people. story yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you everyone have thanks. fun there bye bye bye, -bye. <laughs>